Okay, in this lesson, let's talk about CQRS or the Command Query Responsibility Segregation Pattern, which is an architectural pattern that separates the read and the write operations into different flows. And you will typically use different databases for the writes and the reads. A write operation which will update the system state is funneled through a command bus where they will be processed sequentially as in first in, first out. And importantly, they'll be processed one at a time according to some group ID, such as the flight number in our flight booking example from the previous lesson. So all the reservations for the same flight will be processed sequentially and one at a time. And so we no longer have a problem with race conditions when it comes to our event sourcing system because there are no concurrent requests being processed. And for this command bus, we can use an SQS 5.4 queue or a Kinesis data stream. Both gives us first in, first out and ensure that the commands for a group ID can be processed one at a time and in the order they are received. Between the two of these, I tend to lean towards SQS 5.4 simply because of its pay per use pricing is more aligned with being serverless. And once the commands have been processed and the events are saved in the right database, they're used to build a read model, which might be snapshots that are optimized to serve the read operations, such as what's my current balance or is seat 10D occupied? In fact, you can use the same event to build multiple read models and each being optimized for serving different queries. So it suffice to say that CQIS works well with event sourcing. And it's great for complex domains because it gives you clear separation of concerns and you have optimized data models and data storage for the read and write operations. And you can pick the right database for each workload. For the write database, where we store the events that represent our system state, we can use something like event store, which makes it easy to do event sourcing and do the type of queries and aggregation that we talked about in the previous lesson. And for the read operations that just need the latest snapshot of say your account balance, then we can use DynamoDB, which is optimized for fast key lookups. And for search queries, we can use something like OpenSearch instead, which is optimized for search. So it's easy to use the right tool for the job where we can pick the right data model and database to optimize for each workload. And because the right operations are funneled through a command bus and are processed sequentially one at a time, it's also a good fit for situations that has a lot of contention when it comes to rights, such as reserving seats on a flight or seats for a theater show where multiple users are likely fighting for the same seats. And instead of allowing concurrent updates to the database, which adds complexity and necessitates some kind of locking mechanism, we linearize these commands into an ordered sequence so we can process them one by one. But one thing that many people overlook when they decide to adopt CQRS is that the system is eventually consistent by design. There will always be some lag between the command being accepted, processed, and an event is saved into the right database before that event is then used to synchronize and update the read database. So before you go ahead and uh, try to apply CQIS to your problem, make sure that your domain can actually tolerate eventual consistency. And not thinking about eventual consistency is easily the number one mistake that people make when adopting CQIS. Another challenge with CQIS is that it's kind of hard to give feedback to the user to let them know if their request was successful or not. In our flight booking example, only one of the three users who wanted 10D was successful in reserving the seat. So when their request failed, how do we notify the user that the request was rejected and they need to choose a different seat? One solution is to introduce a WebSocket layer to allow the command processor to notify the user of the outcome. CQIS makes this request response patterns more difficult which forces us to rethink our user experience, which mind you, is not always a bad thing, but it is something that you should be aware of and are thinking about before you jump straight into CQIS. Okay, I hope you have a better understanding of CQIS and the event sourcing by now. They're outside the scope of this workshop, but I do feel that they're important topics to understand when it comes to building event-driven architectures. And I hope I've done a half decent job at explaining them to you. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to ask me on Discord or during this week's live Q&A sessions. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson. 
Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.